DCP Player Free. Get it now from digital.net.au. Hello, this is James Gardner of the Sydney Tech Geek, and today I'm back with John Kellogg of DTS, and he's got a really good update on immersive audio and this, the MDA standard that they've put forward. Now, it's, it's amazingly good news. The speed that they've brought this forward is amazing. I'll show you some more cutaways with what these other vendors are doing, but I'll let John talk about it first and give us like, I'm very excited because immersive audio pretty much is the topic of the show. It's the next um, phase and going digital, right? And uh, I'm actually personally quite surprised at how fast you've been able to get it get it going. So just tell us, how did you do that? How did you get it done so quickly? Well, I mean, uh, since a year ago, I mean, the good news is that MDA, we presented it a year ago, but since then, we it's, it's now real and available from multiple vendors. And uh, there's been a, like an industry-wide effort, really, that's including our, you know, some of our friends and partners like QSC and USL, who are demonstrating it right, right next door here. Um, we now have real tools, so MDA soundtracks of object-based audio, immersive MDA audio can be now mixed. We've mixed in dub stages successfully. Uh, we can export uh, We can export the files, we can make a DCP, and we're playing it in cinemas. That's right, so let's just to go through that quickly so exhibitors who might be watching this may understand, is that uh, your media block or your, your, your DoRaMe or your Cube or your QSC, etc. Can now uh, theoretically the software is coming along where the MDA part of the DCP can be put into that and it can then push that MDA multi-channel file out to amplifiers via a number of different manufacturers and that's pretty much happening now in some prototypes and we should see it in products in, in how long do you think we should before we see it oh I think we'll see it this year this year uh, for sure and you know I think what what we've done is it's been an industry-wide collaboration of some representatives from DCI and studios and manufacturers and even some exhibitors saying let's, you know, the, what the industry really wants out of this and I think why this happened really quick is that the industry really wanted an interoperable object-based yes. immersive format. Yes. Um, we, our belief is, you know, MDA is just a new flavor of object-based PCM. That's and right. Exactly everybody right. should use it and innovate Absolutely. it. And this, this is now real and allows people to do that. And, and for immersive cinema to, I think, be successful, everybody needs to be able to play. From the smallest 100-seat hundred, hundred right. theater with maybe a 9.1 system up to a mega system with 50 speakers like we've done in, in, in Burbank. Yes. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, what, what I think the reason it happened quickly is because you had a whole group of people saying okay let's let's make this and make it work uh, once the MDA file is created yes. uh, I mean it's basically a general in general it's a 7-1 mix plus objects that's right and then uh, the the channel beds are basically removed from the MDA file and those are striped across a normal server for forensic marking and then the rest of the MDA objects are played out from the server through an aux data port to the renderer in the cinema processor, which is what you see in the QSIS system by QS QSC here. Sorry. Um, USL has a very interesting um, uh, approach where it's pre-rendered up to 13.1 channels, which allows a whole other level of cinemas to be involved with the That's immersive. Right. And this is an important, see, what you're getting at here is an important part of what the openness of MDA has given us. We now have QSC, and we have USL over here. And they've approached it slightly differently, slightly with different innovation ideas. And the, the fact that we have a common open format sitting in the middle from the creative side, you've got the, the, the in, 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 people are being in this, in, I can't get the word out, the, um, uh, they're coming up with the best ideas here, They've got the, the open standard sitting in the middle, and then you've got the, the like a QSCs and the USLs coming out with the best ideas to represent it in the cinema. Well, and the lovely thing is that same DCP yes. can play in any room. That's right. It can right. play in 7.1 room, it can play in a room with 50 speakers, 10 speakers, it doesn't matter. There's a unique configuration file in MDA created for each room. 
and then the MDA renderer just says, I, I know that there's this many speakers and where they are, and I will render this mix appropriately with, right. with excellent artistic uh, preservation of artistic intent. That's right. And everyone, like the word was innovate, and anyone on either side of this standard can innovate and go crazy with new ideas and making that stuff work as best it can. And yet if you have a large, you know, immersive room in a cineplex, but at the same time, that same DCP can go down to the smaller rooms in just regular 7.1 or even 5.1. Yes. Anyway, thank you very much, John. Thank uh, you. You've done an amazing job. Uh, and I'll, I'll do some more videos specifically on what QS, QSCs and how they're bringing it forward and, um, and, US, and USL. But one thing before we go, because I want to also talk about the other side of the coin a little bit so the exhibitors and the industry understand because it's not just about the equipment that we make here you, you, it's also the production side and I understand that you've done a lot of work there's a few manufacturers or like we're talking about Fairlight or people to do with um, Pro Tools etc that's a very important part of right. this this, this uh, formula. On the other end of that, one of our goals is to make the immersive object-based mixing for cinema as as least disruptive as possible, yes. which is why the MDA MDA creation doesn't require external boxes or you know extra equipment. It's a it's a plug-in, and we try to um, we're designing it at, and we're working with mixers in such a way to where they can just use their normal workflow. Um, we think that down the road we'll see this just incorporated into DAWs and normal post-production. Yeah. And for now, we've got, you know, Fairlight. Um, you know, Oro is putting is implementing MDA into their tools. Yes. And we have a reference tool, and there are several other tool makers and console manufacturers we're talking to who are all saying, yeah, this is great. You know, interop formats what we need. You know? That's right, and that's an important issue to put forward because. This is a, a change, not in just in, a, in exhibition. It's a change in the production side too, and that is very getting me very mature very quickly as well. So um, that's all really good news. So thank you, John, again. I just wanted Welcome. to make sure everyone know that, and thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll hopefully see you again next year. This is James Gardner for Cine Tech Geek at CinemaCon 2014. Bye for now.